is available in the presence of God. Well, we are so blessed. I hope that you are excited and expectant because uh, we have the Lee Ohana here with us. When they first came to our church, they were our guests. Now they're like Ohana to us, and they're coming all the way from New Zealand. They have a global ministry, especially in the Pacific area, travel all over. You'll hear amazing testimonies. Last night we heard about Samoa. This morning we get to hear more about other places, and I'm excited because I think one of the places you guys ministered was Japan. And so we have a heart for Japan. We love Japan, and we want to see revival break out there as well. But would you help me welcome up Joseph Lee as he comes up to the stage this morning to minister? Hallelujah. Kia ora, bro. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Wow, I don't know if I can, um, I was just preaching this, eh? <laughs> How's everyone doing today? You guys good? Awesome. Wow. Oh, full house today. This is awesome. Praise God. And um, it was, what a blessing. Um, wow, just hearing that testimony has kind of left me speechless, you know? Um, I really just felt like, Lord, help me get a word to unlock this healing. And God just said, her husband, you know, and um, it was just the key. Isn't that interesting? As soon as she forgave, and I don't want to go down this route because we could just spend the whole (laughs) morning on this route, but as soon as she forgave, the pain left. You know, so much of our healing and our physical man has to do with um, unforgiveness in our life. And I just want you to think just for a moment as you heard that testimony, you know, is there unforgiveness in my life? Have I made peace with everyone, you know? Uh, A famous person who was um, in the um, Auschwitz in in, in the German uh, prison camps, um, you know, said that unforgiveness is make someone a prisoner. And when you forgive, you release that prisoner from the prison cell only to realize that prisoner was you. Because <laughs> you think that you've got the other person in prison by maintaining unforgiveness, but really you're the one in prison. You're a prisoner to that thing, and you open the door to a, a demonic spirit that can come and attack your physical health and your family relationships. So that's just a side note. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Starting on a good note. Everyone's happy. Wow. <laughs> you know, but we need that gospel to come with reality. Amen. Uh, we, we need, we, we, we need um, not just the hype spirit, but the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit wants to bring deliverance to the captives. Amen. So that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. We travel just for that one soul. That will be changed. That's why everything we do. So it was great last night. We had some salvations last night. I met some people at the hotel, and uh, it was awesome. They just came up, and and, uh, they turned up to the service. You know, we had an anointing service at breakfast in the hotel. And um, I saw this lady. She just had tears in her eyes. She was sitting eating with her friends. And um, I just felt like, whoa, that's the Holy Spirit. You know, and you see people with tears, people cry for all different reasons, but I just sensed, like, this is the Holy Spirit. So I walked up to them. I can share because I'm not here this morning a bit more, but um, it, was, it was a great time last night. But I just walked straight up to them at breakfast, and I said, are you guys believers? And they kind of looked at me, and the lady said, I just said to her, you need to trust the Lord in what you're going through. And I said, well, I'm here right now to tell you that Jesus loves you and that, yes, you're to trust in the Lord. And so I sat right there and we prayed. The anointing fell in the hotel and it was awesome. And I said, you got to come to the service. So they turned up last night and recommitted their life to Jesus. It was amazing. Praise God. Isn't that awesome? And so I got my awesome family here. You know, Leslie's going to be preaching in the last service today, and it's going to be powerful. So she's the better preacher out of our trio. Amen. And so you want to hang on for that. And so if you are planning just to come this morning, I want to encourage you, come to the next service as well. It's going to be completely different, and we want to go out with a bang. Amen. So it's going to be awesome. Similar theme, talking about abiding, but totally different dynamic of what Holy Spirit's going to do. So I've got my whole family here. Unfortunately, I think they're all out the back, but I have Judah representing our family. Do you want to say hi? So, (laughs) 
So Judah's a year older since you've probably seen him last. He's a teenager now, so I got my first teenager, and it's awesome. Most of the time. <laughs> I'm just joking. Isn't that funny? So I do have a video. You know, we've been traveling, and, <clears throat> and um, do we have any people that are from the Filipino persuasion here, you know, in terms of, yeah, so... I, I just remembered this cool thing. So we had our Revival Summit, uh, which is our end-of-year conference. It was our second one, and that's going really strong in New Zealand. We're getting good turnout, and things are really starting to happen in New Zealand. So we're really excited about what God's doing. We're going to be doing our mission work, but also uh, building something in New Zealand around some kind of uh, revival hub where we can do training and equipping and God's really starting to move. We've got an awesome team now over in New Zealand. Over 80 people have done the training and work with us in New Zealand in our different events. And so God's really moving. <clears throat> and um, while there, we had a prophet come in and prophesy over our ministry. Every year we have her come in. She's um, a pastor that speaks into our life in New Zealand. And um, she began to prophesy and she said, I see the Philippines over our ministry. This is fresh. Pastor, I see the Philippines, and you are going to go to the Philippines, and you are going to have a great influence in the Philippines, and God is opening the door to the Philippines. Now, we don't know anyone from the Philippines in terms of we don't know any pastors, any leaders. We don't know anyone. And so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'll just shelve that one. Yeah, yeah. You know how sometimes you've got to shelve prophecies. And um, anyway, after the service, I kid you not, this is like 20 minutes later, during the break, I check my phone and there's an email from a minister in the Philippines. Wow. 20 minutes after the prophetic word came. And I was like, that's incredible. You know, you know our ministry is called Pioneer Ministry, right? So we pioneer new places. That's what we do. So I'm showing my friends at the, at the lunch table that are there, like, check out this email 20 minutes after this prophecy. And then one of my friends go, looks at me and goes, dude, he goes, You'll never guess what street this ministry's on. And I hadn't read the whole email. I looked at it, and they lived on Pioneer Street. Wow. Pioneer Street in the Philippines. And I thought, that's it. We got to go. <laughs> so we're going to be going to the Philippines this year. I'm going to Japan in a couple of weeks' time as, as a kind of segue from this trip in Hawaii. We have our missions in the Pacific that we're doing. We released our first mission director to Fiji. We now have a mission director who's responsible for all the pastors we know in Fiji to stay connected and, and plan missions and go in and do trainings and equippings. And so God is really building something at the moment, which is really exciting. He's taken our ministry to another level, and we're just super excited about it. So I have a video. I always want to play a video, and so I was thinking I might leave the Japan video for the next meeting. Um, unless I've got two. I've got a lady that got healed of cancer in Fiji, and her um, husband was a Hindu and got saved. Radical story. And I've got the Japan mission video. Which one do you guys want to see? Well, you get, you get one this morning. Yeah, I know you want to see all. They're all on my YouTube page, okay? I have a YouTube page, Pioneer Ministry on YouTube. You can look at all of them. <laughs> but which one? Okay, we'll do Japan. We'll do the miracle one in the next service, okay? So if you want to tee up Japan. This was our mission to Japan last year. Hey, everyone. Joe and Lizzie here from Pioneer Ministries in Konnichiwa. New Zealand. Konnichiwa. We have just got back from Japan, and what an amazing time we had. Jesus is the God of Japan. So check out the video and see what's happened. I, I was shocked that, yeah, that's, that's true. She's getting delivered from a demonic cult, and she's given her life to Jesus while being delivered in Japan. <laughs> and she just got saved, healed, She got delivered. saved, she got yeah. delivered, and yeah. she's now praying in tongues. Her knee was hurting. So this. 20 years she had that pain. I have no pain, no. Yes. The most peace I've ever had before in my life. I believe. I guess you're seeing too much.
なぜなら神様があなたにあの他の人たちと、えー、共に働くことへの勇気を与えてくださるからです。Come on, Jesus, amen. That's all good. Yeah, yeah, it goes on a little bit, but we can just stop there. Hallelujah. Isn't that cool? And so, those people you saw getting baptized were from a Buddhist cult. And the lady that Judah prayed for halfway through that video that got healed of knee problems, she was from that cult and she was just starting to come out, experience Christianity. So, when she got healed, she said, I want to bring my whole cell group from this Brazilian Buddhist cult and、um, I'm going to bring them to your meeting. And so she brought the cell group. There were five or six, four, five, six of them there. And they got radically rocked by the power of God. Deliverance on the ground, salvation. They started speaking in the tongues, baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then some of them wanted to get baptized. They said, We're going to throw all our idols in the trash. Monday's trash day. We're going to throw it all in the trash. We want to give our lives to Jesus. So we just filled up this pool right there after the church service and just baptized them. You know, and the pastors were looking around going, Did we just deliver like a whole Buddhist cult into the gospel? I mean, this is Japan. It's meant to be the missionary graveyard. Amen. So we're so excited about what God is doing in Japan. I mean, I'm telling you, the anointing just turned up. People were getting healed. That lady that got healed of asthma, she was in the hospital watching the live stream. And when we said someone had lung problems, she got healed in the hospital. And then came out and testified when she was released from hospital. So God was just doing miracles in Japan. Aren't you glad God is the God of Japan? Come on. So, Philippines on our radar, Japan, we feel like God's starting to open up Asia. So, we're going to be like Asia Pacific here, and God's doing a new thing. It's very, very exciting. So, please keep us in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Well, I really believe that we're just going to pray for the sick at the end of this meeting today. I've got Judah here, and Ocean is going to come in, and we'll get my kids praying and stuff like that. So, really, I'm just going to share a little, a little tidbit with you,、uh, more from my personal testimony and around the anointing and what the Lord began to do in regards to learning to abide in the anointing of God. Did you guys enjoy last night? Who was here last night? Yeah, I mean, I was just so thankful. I've never preached that message before, but I just really felt like it struck home. And I was so thankful to the Lord. So if you get a chance, please do just、um, go online and have a look、uh, at what、uh, the Lord was speaking. But I really want to talk about and connect the anointing of God with the abiding presence of God. Because as I said last night, there are rewards for living in God's presence. There are rewards for abiding in God's presence. Amen. And we think that if we work harder, we'll get more money. Or if we try harder, God will love us more. Or if we pray harder, something's going to happen. When actually, it's the anointing of God that comes out of His presence that brings those rewards and those blessings into our life. And God once said to me, Son, the more you try and work, The more I rest. But the more you rest, the more I get to work. Because we serve a God that's in an opposite kingdom. It's an upside down kingdom. And the more I work to try and make my Christianity happen, actually, the less God does because it's in my own strength. 
But the more I rest in Him and trust Him and yield to Him and His presence, the more God gets to work in our lives and then the miracles happen, the deliverances happen, the money flows, and God does a blessing in our lives. Amen. And people look and say, well, well how come you, I've been trying harder than you. How come you got more blessing? Huh? When you're doing less. And it's because we're doing less, amen? I mean, have you guys experienced that guy that just gets saved and, and, you know, all of a sudden all these miracles happen and you've been that Christian for 30 years and you're stuck and you're in the wilderness and the, you know, answers to prayer aren't happening and you're looking at this kid that's barely sanctified, that's still struggling going to the club on a Saturday night, but they got saved and they're up here testifying about all the miracles happening. You guys know what I'm saying? And you're saying, why him, Lord? Why not, Right? It's because he's in the presence. It's because he knows he can't do anything. And he's consumed by that grace from God. And in that place of grace, God pours out his blessing and his answer to prayer. Amen. So as we get older, it's harder for us to maintain that yieldedness because we get this thing called self-righteousness coming. I don't know why I'm talking about this right now, but... We get self-righteous, so we get a little bit of sanctification, you know, get a little bit of holiness starts creeping into our lives, you know, our family starts working out. All of a sudden, we think it's all about us. Like we did something to earn that somehow. And instead of Christ righteousness, which is knowing that it's all about Christ and that it's his righteousness in us, and that's when the power flows, we beget self-righteousness. And self-righteousness thinks that it's a little bit to do with us. I, I did a little bit. You know, I prayed this week. And, you know, I, I read my Bible. And so it's a little bit of me. And then the answers to prayer stop. You might be a goody, goody Christian and, and start to look good. But because you're not yielded to the grace, the miracles stop flowing. And so we need to understand that it's actually His righteousness in our lives. Amen. So that's just a little tidbit here, but I really do want to uh, have a look here at um, 1 John chapter 2. And uh, this is a great scripture here, just when talking about um, abiding. Let's start in verse 20. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. I'm making the guys down the back really work hard today because um, I don't give them my notes pre. And um, But you have an anointing from the Holy One. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Say, I have an anointing. It does not say only Joseph has an anointing, does it? It does not say only Judah has an anointing or only Pastor Mike has an anointing. It says, you have an anointing. Say, I have an anointing from the Holy One. Wow. You have it, sister. You have it, brother. Exciting times. And you know all things. And have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. So what he's saying there is he's saying you have an anointing in you that responds to truth. So John's not writing saying you need to know it. He's just saying I'm reminding you of what truth is because when I share this with you, it's going to resound in your spirit. Because you already have truth lying within you. So you're going to resonate with what is truth versus what is a lie. And then it goes down. It begins to talk about a few things. Now skip down to verse 27. Verse 27. Skip down to verse 27. Let's have a look at that. Thank you, brother. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. Amen. And you do not need anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things that is true and is not a lie. Now that's talking about how, you know, we have access to the Bible. Of course, we need teachers and and, and we need ministers to speak into our lives. But it's saying that you have access, you know, through the Bible. Amen. That's why when the Bible was in Latin, uh, it wasn't in the hands of the common people and only the priests could speak the Bible. And there was a, a burden from Holy Spirit to get the Bible back into the common day language. And it cost people. People were martyred. This Bible comes with blood on it because people were martyred to bring the Bible into the common language because of this very reason, because Holy Spirit wants to give every person access where they can learn for themselves. But then, of course, we do have pastors, teachers, evangelists, the officers as 
as well to equip and train us in those truths. So you guys get what I'm saying, amen? I don't want this to be out of balance, but this is where I want to get to, amen? So you have an anointing, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. What teaches you? The anointing. To do what? Abide. When I realized this verse, that the first thing the anointing is to do in my life is to teach me how to abide. See, we say, well, I need the anointing to heal the sick. I need the anointing to do deliverances. I need the anointing to prophesy. I am the anointing to bless my life. The first thing the anointing is going to do is none of those things. The first thing the anointing is going to do is to teach you how to abide. And if you can get this today, this is going to set your whole year up strong. Because when I got hold of this, I stopped going after the anointing just for the goosebumps, the tickle. I stopped going after it just because I wanted to see a sick person healed. I started going after that anointing that is in my life and realized that the first thing it's going to do is teach me how to abide in the presence of God. And so in my early days, I began to just begin to seek God just as a young man trying to find this abiding place because I knew that everything comes out of the abiding place. Instead of seeking the stuff, I sought Jesus and the stuff followed. Amen? And so I would begin to go into my room and I'd begin to seek God for hours. I can remember the first year I gave my life back to the Lord when I was 21. And I was on the benefit, the, 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 what you would call the benefit or the, you know, a poor person's wage from the government because I didn't have a job. And every day I would just, that's where I come from, the benefit, by the way. And every day I would just seek God. Every day I would just uh, worship God and put on worship music. And every day I, I, I would read the word of God. And I'd be searching for that place where the anointing would manifest. Now, how, how many have felt the presence of God maybe during one of those songs this morning, right? You just felt that sense there was something on a verse or something on a, right? That's the anointing in you saying, I like that. That one verse, I like that. How many of you have, have read the Bible one time and you read a whole chapter, but then one line stood out to you? And spoke to you for that day. That's your anointing telling you God likes that. That's for you. Amen. So the anointing teaches you, but more than just that one little thing, the anointing teaches you how to abide in that place. See, how many of us were, were worshiping before and that one line came up in that worship song and you felt something jump in you? What if we'd have stayed on that one verse? just for a little bit longer, lingered on it, abided in it. Because what was that anointing telling us? God likes that today. God likes that one verse today. God likes that one song today. What if he liked one song and we said, you know what, let's can the other ones and let's be in that one song today. Why? Because it's anointed because he's teaching us to abide in it. What if you went home and you put that one song on the worship today and you said, you know what, I'm just going to worship that one, on that one song today at home because there was something about it at church that really spoke to me. I'm going to put it on again and I'm going to abide in that song. Because when I abide in that song, if he anoints it, I'm abiding in him. You see? And so I learned when I was young, I would read a scripture and a scripture would stand out. And how many of us have had that happen when a scripture would stand out? But what if we abided in that scripture because it was anointed because God was saying, abide here. That's what the anointing's teaching us, where to abide. And so I abide in here. So all day I would just think about that scripture. All day I would just meditate on that scripture. Instead of saying, well, I read my, you know, five verses today and all that, nothing wrong with that. But what I learned to do is when I found that one thing that was anointed in my life, I would abide in it. 
and I would just stick in it and I would think about it all day and I would allow that scripture to be mean something in me and to become revelation in me and to become reality in my life. And all of a sudden, as I abide in it, the scripture would take on a life force of its own because it is life, amen? It is Rima word and it would go from Logos to Rima and become reality in my life. Hallelujah. And so I learned this over this first year of just, wow, what, where is God abiding? What song is he on? I'm just going to live there. What, what, what church you know, environment, what speaker's coming into town? And, and I, I hear about the speaker and something jumps in my heart. It's the anointing. There's something there I need to get from that speaker. So then I'd go to that conference and I'd abide at the conference and I'd abide in that anointing that speaker brung and I'd just abide there because God was at work in me. And as I abided in that place, all of a sudden that heavenly realm began to be attracted to my life. And the miracles started flowing and the deliverances started flowing and the healing started flowing. But it all came out of the abiding place. And so I would spend time, one worship song, and I would get into the presence. And then I'd be like, wow, one day I realized, wow, the presence of God is in my room. The same presence I felt at church, it's in my room. This is when I was a single guy, not married, no kids, just trying to find God. And the presence turned up in my room. And so I'd think, well, how long can the presence stay in my room? And so I'd begin to try and train my heart to stay affectionate to him, to see how long the presence could stay in my room. And I began to find out when the presence would come into the room and when it would leave the room. And would it leave because I had to get about my day and God knew that? Or would it leave because my thoughts became shifted into carnality and so the presence would lift? And so I would learn, what type of thoughts do I need to maintain the affection of the Lord? See, most of us only experience the presence during times of worship, which is amazing. But you know why God, because you know Jesus didn't walk around with a five-piece band. Huh? <laughs> Jesus didn't walk around, you know, and people are following him. You know, you know what I mean? He's like the Merit Pied Piper walking through town. Amen? Did he? But the presence was with Jesus all the time. So what was it about Jesus' life that cultivated a presence without a band where we need a band to have presence? Just a thought. I believe it was his heart affection. Because what worship does is it seduces our emotional realm into a heart affection with Jesus, with God, where the presence can manifest. But I believe Jesus walked in such a way where his heart affection was always trained to the Father. And so he could always be in a conscious state of awareness of the presence of God. And so I began to say, what if I could train my heart? What if I could train my thoughts to be affectionate towards God in such a way as if worship was playing, that the presence of God would manifest? And I do it to this day. Sometimes I'll worship God in my secret place with music. But sometimes I'll test my heart. I'll say, no music today. I'm going to test my heart and see if I can train my heart into the affection without music until I feel the presence come into the room. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. These are keys that you can live by. I said last night that Brother Lawrence, who wrote a book called Practicing the Presence, he could wash dishes and people would come from miles around to watch him wash dishes because when he washed dishes, the presence of God would manifest because he had trained his heart affection to love Jesus while washing dishes. Come on. Come on. And so I'd begin to do that in my room. And I'd notice presence would come. Presence would lift. Presence would be here. Presence would leave. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm learning by the anointing how to abide. And then one day I'd finish up with the Lord and had a good time with him and in my bedroom. And then I jumped in my car and I'm going throughout my day. And then suddenly the presence of God filled the car. I was like, oh, he's here. In my car. So not just in the conference I went to, not just in my bedroom, now he's in my car. (laughs) And then I'd start to be like, okay, he's in my car. What do you want to say, Holy Spirit? 
What are you highlighting? Was it a thought I had that you liked? And I would try and understand what thought that I have that would bring the manifestation of the presence because sometimes I'd be thinking about something that God would actually be saying, yes, that's a key of wisdom. Or a gift of the Spirit would manifest and be like, yes, that's knowledge. Like I'm thinking about how can I be better with my family or how can I get a new job? Maybe I should do this or that. You know, you have those thoughts all the time. But then the anointing would highlight something and be like, that's the track I want you to go down. And I'd be like, okay, so what was I thinking? Or what song was playing on the radio? Or what, what, what did I just think about? Was it a verse or something that made God manifest? Or is He just manifesting because He wants to spend time with me? And there's been times where I would literally pull over on the side of the road. And I'd be like, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm here for you. Because the Holy Spirit will begin to test you if you're really going after abiding. He's going to start to test you. He's going to start to say, okay, does this church really want to go after abiding? Okay, I'm going to see how much do they really want me. And he's going to start to manifest his presence in different ways. It might be longer in the service, lingering longer. It might be in home groups where the manifest presence starts to come. It, it might be individually when God is calling you to prayer and fasting. And there's going to be different ways that Holy Spirit's going to start to, do you really want me? And it's the anointing that will begin to teach us how to abide and remain. And so everyone knows as you get busier in life, like you preached about Mark, because I would listen to your preaching to just help me segue into what you were doing. Um, incredible. Isn't Mark an amazing preacher? I mean, you guys are so blessed, man. I really want to say that. And just honor the father-son generational thing that God is doing in this church. I mean, it impacts my life to see that, man. I'm just so blessed. You know, and, and you were just talking about the busyness of life, right? And so God is going to test us by we're so busy. Are we too busy for God? Because Holy Spirit's going to start to creep into your every day. And he knows you got nine to five. He created seven days a week. He created 24 hours a day. He knows you got it. He created it. But he's going to test you. Am I more important? Well, God, God you know you feel his prayer, but you know I'm, I'm off to this thing. But will you just take five minutes and be with me? I want to tell you something that's going to bless the thing you're about to go to. No, no, I'm too busy. I'll talk, I'll talk to you later. And I'll, I'll see you at home group, God, you know? You know, or, or, you know, God, I don't have time this morning for that half hour with you, that devotion. Oh, you know, I'm so busy and I got to hit this thing. Well, God knows that you got to do that. If you spend half an hour with him, he's going to make your day go like that. He's going to bless your day. You're going to be able to do everything you tried to do in, in eight hours. You can do it in five when you have God's anointing in your life. Amen. And so I began to l learn to yield to the voice and yield to the Holy Spirit and yield to that anointing. And I'd pull over on the side of the road and I'd just worship him. Just, I'm on my way to work, but I'm taking that five minutes to say, I recognize your presence. Your anointing's teaching me how to abide. And so I'm going to abide. And all of a sudden, that presence starts to get stronger because God's like, he likes this. He wants this. I'm going to pour out more. The anointing's going to increase. I'm going to release more of his presence. You understand? The anointing teaches us how to abide. And so as I began to develop that, all of a sudden, I would be in an elevator or in, you know, even to this day, in a hotel at breakfast, and I'm sensing, is the anointing here? I will meet people, and I can just feel the anointing, and I will say, are you a Christian? And they'll say, how do you know? I just felt the anointing. You see? Because God just turns up on things. Or you're, you're, you're dialoguing with someone, and suddenly you feel the anointing, and God says, I want you to pray for that person, and the anointing's here for it. 
But if you're not trained in the anointing, you won't recognize it. You won't understand that that is your moment to see a miracle take place in your life because you weren't abiding. Amen. And so God wants to train us and equip us. If we want to see the anointing touch this whole region, he wants to train us and equip us. Hallelujah. One more verse, and then we're just going to pray for the sick today. But I just want you to have a look at briefly Isaiah 61. I'm just going to mention a few things from Isaiah 61 in regards to abiding in the anointing. Isaiah 61 says this. So we're just going to read it. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me. Amen? The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. Amen? Not a mini Jesus, not a mini Lord, right? The same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead is upon every, each and every one of you. Say, the spirit is upon me. Spirit is Say, I have an anointing. Have an anointing. <laughs> You're getting it. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Don't you want to find out what that looks like for your life? Yeah. Abide. Because the Lord has anointed me. Now, as you start to abide in that anointing, all of a sudden, these blessings start to flow in your life, and it's not a work, it's a grace. Amen, Pastor Mike? It's a grace that comes to your life. To preach good tidings to the poor, you start to want to help the poor, amen? You start to want to preach the gospel. You just can't help but tell people. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, amen? So you start to want to help the broken to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. So first say this, the anointing affects me. The affects me. Second thing, the anointing affects, the anointing affects others. So once you've been transformed by this anointing, it begins to flow out of your life into the lives of others, to comfort those who mourn, to console people who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. You start to affect people's lives. Isn't that amazing? But then something else begins to happen. So it affects me, say me. Then it overflows to others, say others. Then look what happens. They shall begin to rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations, repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. So all of a sudden, after you affect others, God begins to transform your city. And generations begin to be impacted. The same generational blessings from Mike to Mark begin to flow in your family. And you break the cycle of alcohol addiction. And you break the cycle of abuse. Come on. And you break the cycle of all that stuff. Amen. And your kids become blessed because you're rebuilding the generations. And you transform the city. Not, not, not by just building buildings, but by building people's lives. Because all of a sudden, families are impacted. Amen. And the familiar demons that have wrecked your generational lines, brothers, is over. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you've fought and you've won. And the anointing is now in your family, brother. And I'm talking to you so that you can be blessed and the generations can be blessed after you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Then more starts happening. Look at this. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. The sons of the foreigner shall be your plowman and your vine dresser, but you shall be named the priests of the Lord. All of a sudden, God begins to impact your finances. All you're doing is abiding. All you're doing is focusing on the anointing in your life that you already have and abiding. And God starts to say, I'm going to start to impact your flocks. I'm going to start to, you're going to start to have employees. You're not going to be servant to the lender. You're now going to be the lender yourself. Amen. Foreigners are going to now work in your vineyard, right? You're going to have employees now, but you're going to be the boss. Hallelujah. This is what this is. They shall call you the servants of, of the Lord. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor, and instead of confusion, you shall rejoice in the portion of the Lord. And it goes on and on. You can read Isaiah 61 for yourself. Amen? So as you abide in that anointing, teaches you how to abide, all of a sudden fruit begins to manifest in your life. And you didn't work it. It's a grace of abiding in the presence of God. Hallelujah. 
Amen? Come on, can I just have the keys come up just for five minutes? This healing anointing now has fallen on my kids. When Judah was seven years old, when Ocean was seven years old, they began to operate in this anointing because we abided. Judah was driving, and it was in Hawaii when it happened, seven years old, 2016. He started to get fire in his hands on the way to a meeting. He said, Dad, I've got fire in my hands. I said, well, that's a sign of the healing anointing, son. It's transferring. I'm rebuilding my generational line. See, I can just come up here and preach, and you think, Joe, wow, must have it all together. No, 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 no. We had Christmas recently. Leslie's side of the family, all the brothers and sisters are on their first marriages. All their kids are their kids from their first marriages. They have an amazing side of their family. My side is like blended family time. We've got different cultures. We've got stepchildren and grand stepchildren and different marriages and on the second and third and all that stuff, man. It's like a blended, beautiful, broken mess. And I love it, but it's broken. So I'm up here fighting for my generations. I'm up here fighting for these guys. I'm up here to heal my generational city. And so I'm a sign that it can be done through the anointing of God that's in you. Amen. So I want us to just lift. Come on, you can clap to the Lord for that. Amen. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. And we can just lift our hands right now in this place. Come up here, kids. Come on, why don't you come and help, Dad? And we're just going to take these next five minutes before I hand it back. Is that all right? Are we on time, Pastor Mike? Yeah. And we're going to pray for some sick people today. We're going to pray for healing today. And then my wife is going to bring a powerful message and just we're going to just let loose in the next service. You might want to stick around. But it's a grace. See, I can't work up the healing gift on my life. Like you heard about that lady last night that got healed. I can't work up the miracles on my life. All I can do is trust the anointing that God gave me and how I yielded to training that the anointing trained me to abide. And out of that, the gifts flowed and functioned in my life. But it all comes back to that. The secret place and abiding with Jesus. Thank you, Father. And I just feel His presence all through this place right now. Many of you are starting to feel heat come upon your body right now. It might be for healing. It might just be God's sign to you and confirmation that you have an anointing. But some of you will feel heat just coming upon you right now. Some of you will feel goosebumps just beginning to... Some of you are going to feel the wind of the Spirit. We've been sensing this new thing in our ministry where people feel wind when we pray for them. A physical wind will just suddenly manifest inside, outside, doesn't matter where, sunny day, very still, and the wind will just sweep through the moment we pray. And it's that anointing, it's the wind of the Spirit that God is beginning to blow. So some of you are going to feel that wind begin to blow. Some of you are going to feel your heart start to race. I just believe there's people in this room that. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just trying to follow Holy Spirit right now. Thank you, Jesus. You want to respond to this word right now. You want to feel that anointing in your life and you're willing to yield to it. I'm not going to call you up, but I just want you to just stand right now if that's you. Just as a sign that you're willing to say, yes, I want this in my life. As you do, that's the power of God going to come upon you right there. As you do, that's the power of God coming upon you. As you do, that's the power of God coming upon you right there. As you do, there's a fresh anointing that's just falling right now. As you do, I mean, it's amazing how I I talked. All I did today was talk scripture, but there's still a wrestle in some of your hearts, but that's up to you. But as you do, the anointing's falling on you right now. As you do, you feel that fire. As you do, the anointing is going to teach you how to abide. As you do, you're 
you're entering that new season right now. As you do, yes, yes, yes. Pour on them, Holy Spirit. Drop on them, Holy Spirit. Fall on them, Holy Spirit. Just as it says in Acts chapter 10, and the anointing fell on those that were in the room. I don't understand it, but there is a dropping. There is a falling. There is an unlocking, unleashing that begins to take place. Yes, yes, yes. All through this place right now. All through this place right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, we respond right now to that anointing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that it will follow you out this door today and home, and you will start responding to his unction and his presence and his promptings in a new way today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Who's feeling it right now? Who's feeling that anointing? We're going to pray for the sick in the next service. I just need to be led by the Spirit right now. Who's feeling that right now? You're feeling that? Come up here and my kids are just going to lay hands on you. You're just sensing that right now. Can we just get a prayer helper behind her? Just lift your hands right now. Come on, it's strong and it's now and it's dropping right now. Who else is feeling that right now? Just lay hands on them, kids. Who else is feeling that right now? You're feeling that anointing just settling on you right now. Just wave to me so I can see you. Come on, come on, just come up here right now. It's strong and it's dropping right now. We're gonna pray for the sick in the second service. So if you're sick today, just come to the second service. Maybe it's time to abide and just just cancel that appointment and just take that gamble today that you're gonna abide with him. Come on, son, just pray right now. We're just gonna let it drop. That same anointing that dropped on me when I was 21, that dropped on my son and my daughter when they were seven, we just drop it right now. We just drop that right now in the name of Jesus. That's it, it drops right now, that's it. Just need a catcher here, right here, right now. Just need a catcher here, right here, right now. It just drops right now. In Jesus, that's it. Go, take that. Take that from my son. Take that from Judah. Take that from Judah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. He's got it. He's got it. Come on and just move on, honey. Just be quick about it. Just move on to the next. Come over here. Just release it over this lady right here because it's just dropping. It's just dropping right now. That's it. That's it. It just breaks through right now. Yeah. Much loneliness, but the Lord is lifting that off you. Much loneliness, but this anointing, you you can be alone, but you'll never be lonely with this anointing. That's it. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Go right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Fresh anointing for a fresh season. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. Come on, honey. Come on, honey. Just move, Judah. Come on. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Let's go. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. Can we just start to sing one of those songs that we sung today? A fresh anointing for a fresh season. That's it. Fire. 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 Right now. That's it. A fresh anointing for a fresh season right now. In Jesus' mighty name. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. That's it. Fire. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. it. You got it. A fresh anointing for a fresh season right now. A fresh anointing for a fresh season. Fresh anointing for a fresh season. Thank you, Father. More. 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 Thank you, Father. That's it. That's it. It's just lifting right now. There's a breaker coming on your life. That's it. That's it. That's it. There's a well flowing up within you right now. Come on, let's all sing this song, amen? Let's all sing, let's all sing. We're just going to do a couple of verses. Let's just sing. Come on, let's sing that verse again. Come on, the anointing's just falling all over this place. Thank you, Jesus. Fresh anointing, come on, Sam. Fresh anointing, come on. Fresh anointing right now. Fresh anointing, that's it. Fresh anointing, that's it. Fire right now, that's it. Fresh anointing all over this place right now. Fresh anointing right now. Fresh anointing right now. Fresh anointing just falling on this place. Just falling in this place. One more, one more time. You are mine.
Hallelujah. Oh, the Lord is just moving right now and very, very powerfully. <clears throat> anointing is a person. Amen. When we say the anointing, we don't mean like some kind of spiritual, you know, thing. It's, it's him. Mm. He's here. He's here. And so we, we just, uh, just want to tell the teams that we're just kind of, you know, reverencing the moment. Amen. <clears throat> um. So there's no, there's no hurry. Uh, we're just going to continue to linger in the Holy Spirit. He's just continuing to move. <clears throat> so let's just wait on him. And um, in the meantime, again, we're just going to continue to worship. This may seem a little awkward, but I don't want to um, um, <clears throat> deprive, you, deprive you of a great opportunity. Yes. And we, we want to, um, we want to uh, just... How many of us just love what's going on this morning? Yeah. Just, yeah. This is so, so amazing. Yeah. And so we're, we're just going to continue in this. And it might just go right into 10 o'clock. And, and you, you are 100% free, amen. So in other words, if, if you, you really have to be somewhere, that you've, no one's going to look at you like, hey, you know, can't you see what's going on? You're supposed to stay. No, <laughs> just, just uh, yeah, just quiet. Excuse yourself. You're fine. You're fine. But what's happening right now, the Holy Spirit is moving in just such a beautiful way. Amen. We don't want to um, disrupt, amen, amen, what he's doing. Yes. But we're also, I'm going to, uh, just going to very quietly show you a QR code. Go ahead, Joel, show him that. Mm. <clears throat> now, this is, a, this is a very undisruptive way of, of sharing with you an opportunity to continue to partner with Joe and Leslie, okay? Because I know some of you have to go, so, but I want you to catch this <clears throat> and have an opportunity to just continue what's happening here all over Asia Pacific especially if you're Filipino you should give okay this is the code <laughs> to give to their ministry oh yeah and then we have these envelopes these envelopes are also available uh, just back there just oh, again just very subtly very quietly and there's a <clears throat> our box back there and that's how we take offerings in this church there's no bucket, there's no, there's no guy, you know, you know, with a bucket saying, looking at it, go, that it? <laughs> no, instead, <clears throat> it's very just led by the Holy Spirit, amen? So this, the same Spirit that is moving right now and just um, uh, firing up the anointing in each one of you is the same Spirit that's, that's going to lead you into this part of the service as well. So, yeah. Um, let's just continue with what we're doing and Michael just continue to lead us and then uh, so you're technically dismissed but um, you don't have to go anywhere if you don't want to feel free to stay in fact uh, I think it's just getting started here so the prayer team is going to keep moving go ahead <clears throat> we're going to pray for Kili right now <laughs> so yeah let's keep going hallelujah <clears throat> 